Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. Monday morning, the 12th. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. It's interesting because I didn't think I was going to come on here this morning. I am pushed for time and have appointments throughout the morning, but wanted to jump on here before the day got started to give you encouragement from the Lord by the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you know 2 Corinthians 3, 17, that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Hey, Beck and Donna and Liz and Wade, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. It is an amazing morning. Oh my goodness. The power of Holy Spirit and the word of truth has just been stirring in my members. It is absolutely amazing how merciful and wonderful God is as his mercy and love endure forever. That mercy and love chases us all the days of our life. Amen. Hey, Rose, Shoshana, and Kimberly, God bless y'all. It was amazing because last night, God gave me a dream. He gave me so many dreams last night. And in the dream was Psalm 136, and the time was 136. And the Holy Spirit quickened me in the middle of the night. It was about 1 a.m. as I opened the Word of Truth and looked at Psalm 136. And God wanted me to bring this to you today. It cannot be emphasized enough how merciful our God is. And Jesus says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the merciful, for they should obtain mercy. And some of you are wondering, God, why can't I get a breakthrough? Why can't I get freedom in a certain area? Well, a couple things God wants me to bring to you today. Good morning, Amy. Is that we project from our members onto others, the badness that we feel inside of us. And this is from the kingdom of the world that Satan is ruler over, where the spiritual dis-ease comes into our members and everything takes shape through that form of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so areas in our body that are traumatized if we're not focused on Christ Jesus, if we're not focused on uh, Matthew six thirty three, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then that trauma is going to speak in our members and it's going to bring condemnation in our mind. It's going to cause us to accuse others by thinking of the negative things that they've done towards us. And saints, if you haven't heard my testimony for over a year ago, it was almost a year and a half, over a year and a half ago, where Holy Spirit just came upon me for an entire week. And that entire week, He was showing me the spiritual warfare that I was doing was coming from the soul in a specific area. And it wasn't coming from the throne of God, the kingdom of heaven. And so God showed me that we in our members don't realize because of the wounds and the trauma that we haven't dealt with, and we're not seated with Christ in heavenly places, and we're in that place of the soul, that we project onto others areas of where we feel bad in order to make ourselves feel good. Romans 2 shows this, that we judge others as we have that in our own members. We judge others. I'm going to scroll off comments because it's distracted me. Sorry. Let me get my computer so I can read the word. Amen. How many of you love the word of truth? And so a couple of things that God wants me to share with you is that a couple of nights ago, he gave me a dream. And in the dream, there were people lined up like inside of the courtyard of a prison where they were going to be executed. And they had blindfolds on their eyes and their hands tied behind their backs and people that were speaking against them had swords in their hand facing them. And they were on this pulley, and the pulley was released, and they went straight into the person that they were speaking against. And God has had me warning about that, about the tongue, 
for over two decades about watching what you speak about others, what you say about different circumstances, because life and death is in the tongue. Let me get that scripture up. Life and death are in the, is in the power of the tongue, and that's Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Judge not, lest ye be judged. I remember when I wrote my first book, Glory to Glory Sisterhood, in uh, mid-2000, and it was the first book that I released. I had a chapter about judging others, and I explained, as the Lord has taught me, that many times that warfare that we're going through many times is the result from judging other people. And so God always taught me if I was going through spiritual warfare, so to speak, was to repent of any area. If anything came up where I had misjudged others. And so I would just say, Father, have I misjudged someone? And if he showed it to light, I would repent. And immediately the warfare stopped. And so in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their word. And so saints, we have to be so circumspect about what we're speaking in relation to other people and other circumstances and we have to come into the place of knowing greater is christ jesus in us amen than he that is in the world greater is christ jesus in us but this is the thing if your heart is in the kingdom of the world if you're misjudging somebody if you have contentions jealousies strife bitterness you are in the kingdom of the world in your heart. And so you're going to speak and you're going to pray from that space. And it's going to be witchcraft. It's not going to be holy. It is not going to be the Father's heart. And it's going to end up backfiring on you. And you're going to stay in this space of feeling condemnation in the mind. And in order to get reprieve and relief from that, you're going to project onto others a badness that you see through see in them by the log in your own eye Luke 642 by which you're criticizing other people understand this we're not supposed to criticize others we're supposed to love people right and I'm not talking about where I call out the false prophets and the false teachers that is exposing the wolves in sheep's clothing I am talking about that as we are living our life, that we are not supposed to speak poorly of other people. We're supposed to speak life in life abundantly. And if we speak life about others, oh my goodness, can't you imagine the life that is in and upon us by the Holy Spirit in relation to our own healing? God is bringing this up to me sometimes, not all the time, <clears throat> Uh, let me get this up. Sometimes, not all the time, we can be in a place in which it ends up backfiring on us. And I'm getting up James. I think it's James 5. I want to get to James. <clears throat> James 5, 16. Sometimes it can end up backfiring on us and we can end up getting actual dis-ease. Now, this is not every dis-ease, okay? But this can be some people's dis-eases. I remember when I was coaching a particular woman and she was resistant at first to go to the doctor, and this was over a year ago. She was resistant in going to the doctor and I pleaded with her. I said, you need to go to the doctor and you need to get a diagnosis because there's issue with you and she just initially resisted so strongly and finally i just kind of 
threw my hands up in the air and I said, you do what you want to do, but I just think it's wisdom to go to the doctor. But before that, for years, this woman had left a church and it had ended up making her bitter. It had made her so bitter that any time someone that had prior been to the church was a member of the church, that any time they passed away or got a disease, she would always message me. And it was almost like she was glorying in the fact, and I know she was unconscious of this, okay? But she was glorying in the fact that people were dying of disease that had been associated with that church that had persecuted her. And I brought it up to her and I said, I uh, ask you to stop sending me this information because it is not pure, it is not holy. And I said, and the motives behind it are not God. Well, she proceeded to tell me that I was absolutely wrong and that her motives were pure, but I could just see and I knew because she shared her heart, the bitterness in her members and dis-ease just took a hold of her saints. We have to be careful what we're speaking and thinking about others. So in James 5, 16, scripture says, confess to one another, therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. The earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic and working. And I think about this, and also it says in verse 15, well, let's go to verse 14. In fact, there's a gnat flying around me. Um, is anyone among you sick? Well, let's start in verse 13. Is anyone among you afflicted, ill-treated, suffering evil? He should pray. Is anyone glad at heart? He should sing, sing praise to God. And the prayer that is, is anyone among you sick, he should call in the church elders, the spiritual guides, and they should pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the Lord's name. Saints, we have got to be in a space of humility that we are never above humbling ourselves in front of others, confessing our sins and repenting, amen, and the sins of a righteous man, the sins of a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall have a knowledge and understanding of the Holy One of Israel, amen, and they shall walk in the love thereof. I think about how amazing it is that I've had the opportunity to be persecuted. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness, for great is your reward in heaven. And that reward is available today. And it is knowing the Father as you have never known. Think about it. It took Stephen being stoned to death for him to perceive the heavens opened up and Jesus Christ standing at the Father's right hand in the glory of Christ that was coming from the face of Christ and from his members pouring out on Stephen. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. We see God by the eyes of our heart as we walk in holiness and righteousness. And so I want to end, well, let me say this as well. Let's go to Matthew 6, uh, Matthew 12, Matthew 12. And I want to get to the scripture as I was mentioning about being careful what we say about others because we are murdering them. We are doing detestable abominations that God hates. So let's read verse uh, 35. The good man, well, verse, 30, verse 34, you offspring of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil and wicked? For out of the fullness, the overflow, the superabundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good man from his inner good treasure flings forth good things, and the evil man out of his inner evil storehouse flings forth evil things. But I tell you on the day of judgment, men will have to give account for every idle and operative non-working 
word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned and sentenced. Saints, I will never forget a man many years ago. I heard his testimony, this minister, this evangelist, and he had died. And he had gone before the Lord and he was in a courtroom and the Lord Jesus Christ was bringing up that which he had done. And the man was like, no, I didn't do that. And the Lord called a witness and the witness that came against the man was the man's own mouth. And so the whole time the man had to endure all of these idle words he had spoken and they were a witness against him. Saints, we have to walk in humility. We have to be pure in heart and we have to repent of this kind of act. Amen. So now we're going to end with what was in my dream last night is there was so much going on and God was bringing deliverance all throughout the dream to all these different people and he was bringing acceleration and in the dream Psalm 136 was there and it was everywhere I turned the time was 136 and Psalm 136 was flashed up and the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night at about 1 a.m. again and told me to read Psalm 136 so I want to read Psalm 136 to you and let this be a compass for us this week of how merciful and gracious and good God is blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy amen Psalm 136 verse 1 oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who by wisdom and understanding made the heavens for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who stretched out the earth upon the waters for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who made the great lights for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. The sun to rule over the day for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever, and the moon and the stars to rule by night. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever, and brought Israel out from among them. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy, say it with me, and loving kindness endure forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever, but shook off and overthrew Pharaoh and his host into the Red Sea, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. And slew famous kings for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Say it with me, saints. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. And Og, king of Bashan. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. And gave their land as a heritage. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Even a heritage to Israel his servant. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who earnestly remembered us in our low estate. And imprinted us on his heart. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever and rescued us from our enemies. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever to him who gives food to all flesh. 
for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Saints, that should be our anthem that God's mercy and loving kindness endures forever. And if that is our anthem, guess what? We will have mercy on others in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Hey, Sherry, I love you, friend. I will see you all later, and you have a blessed day.